Okay, so our first stop is Bookstop. Say that ten times fast. Um, it kind of just looks like your average bookshop, but it isn't um, because all the books are five pounds or less. Look at that. Um, they had a lot of new books in as well, but they weren't like new, new releases. They were all just kind of quite new. Um, but here's me going downstairs. Uh, stop filming the floor. Stop it. Just, just stop. Honestly, the things editing me has to do to save the video. Ugh. But yeah, they had lots of different classics editions. I loved this one of Alice in Wonderland. I thought it was stunning. They had quite a lot of good looking books, but I kind of had all the ones I wanted, so I left empty handed here. Oh, here's me doubling back on myself because I didn't really know where I was going. Um, but now we approach the covered market, and this has been here since like 1774, so it has seen a lot of history, but I doubt it looks much how it did back in those days. Um, but here's me in search of our next book. I was promised free books, um, but here's Gulp Fiction. I was looking at all these tables, just kind of scrutinizing all the books on them, because if you bought a book on any of the tables, you'd get free coffee. So I wanted to see if there was anything I wanted to get me that free coffee. But I didn't really find anything I wanted, because um, the books I wanted were just like, I'd rather have them in hardback, so I didn't want to get them. Oh, stop it! Went upstairs hoping to find some free books because that is what I'd seen on other people's videos. Um, so yeah, here's me going upstairs. Oh, um, look, a curtain. So I pulled back the curtain looking for the free books. Oh, th there was nothing there. I was not meant to do that. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, here are the cheapest books I could find. The cheapest one was a pound and all the money goes to charity. So that's cool. But I didn't find anything I liked um, and I had a long look. So I had to leave the covered market empty-handed. I'd still recommend going here, even if you don't end up buying anything. Oxfam books. Uh, you don't want to hear me sing. I went downstairs because I looked. I wanted to look at the language section. I always do that when I come into Oxfam shops because quite often they do have a, like a small French section, and I always think, "Oh, I'll have a look." Um, but there was a person there, and I didn't want to say anything to them so i just went upstairs and looked at the fiction section that edition of strange the dreamer is kind of annoying me because i would have at least looked at it had i noticed it but yeah they had a pretty good french section they had like a whole shelf of french books it was quite good but i was getting a bit desperate here because i it was now three bookshops down and i still hadn't got anything but coming around the corner is blackwell's art and poster shop so there are technically two black well actually i think there are three but the main two are a graphic novel and sci-fi fantasy bookshop and the, another one that's basically all the other stuff um so here's me looking around the graphic novels um it was quite fun not that they had a huge selection it was quite limited you're better off going to forbidden planet in my opinion uh but the fantasy and sci-fi section was quite cool Here's me looking at all the paperbacks. Oh, look, a Dalek. I'm not, I didn't get exterminated, luckily. But they had quite a good hardback selection. Here's me looking at books that I'd never heard of to try and find a new favorite. That's always quite a fun thing I like to do when I go to a big bookshop, but nothing was striking my fancy. I looked for The Last Tale of the Flower Bride. Unfortunately, they didn't have it. I did see this book though, which had a really cool cover, but the synopsis wasn't quite as great. Here's me telling myself, basically, by holding this out to the camera to remember this book. Oh, look, another shot of the graphic novels. I think they've got the point that this is a graphic novel shop. You don't, you don't have to milk it. Don't worry. I did see some graphic novels that look quite cool here. Um, I want to read Stonefruit. I've heard good things about that one. Uh, here's me basically doubling back on myself, but you can get a better look at the Dalek if, if that's what your sort of thing. Okay, where are we going next? Oh, I think we're going to another Oxfam, but not an Oxfam books, just just an, just an Oxfam. Here's me discreetly trying to film. Oh, look, you can see me in the reflection. Wow. Um, but yeah, here's me entering. Wow. I was trying to look for the books, so I decided to go downstairs, um, but it wasn't clearly signposted, but they did have some books, including this US edition of The Star of the Sea, uh, love that book, by the way. Recommend. I spy on Waterstones. Even just from the outside, this Waterstones was beautiful, but it was a bit embarrassing because I couldn't open the door. Yeah. I found myself in the non-fiction section at first, which is a little bit unexpected because normally they just have the fiction as the first thing you see. Um, but anyway, I went upstairs. 
And they had some cool displays just kind of showing you the kinds of books you could find on that floor. Here's me looking at Nona the Ninth. I didn't know how much it was, but I assumed expensive, so I put it back. There were some good views actually from out the window, but I kind of wish I'd gone up higher because maybe I would have got a better view over the city. There were so many different staircases. They just kept going and the lift wasn't working. So I couldn't just go down in the lift to the basement because I went to the children's department and you'll see me actually start to buy books. So clearly I was having quite a lot of fun in that Waterstones. I was, it was quite a fun shop. Anyway, I saw this half price book and it immediately intrigued me because I love a bargain. I found the new Ross Welford, so of course I got that. And I also like looking at this Waterstones children's prize nominee display. But yes, time to go to the Black Horse. Oh look, it's the Bodleian Library, but you had to pay for entry, so I didn't go in. <laughs> but finally, I went to a Black Horse. I order off them all the time because they often have a load of good editions that I can't get anywhere else. I mean, like US editions. Um, also, you know, you're not you're not lining Jeffrey Bezos's pocket when you order off Black Horse, and they ship to loads of places. So I basically should work there because I'm an advert. But this is me going into the Norrington room, and if you go down the stairs and look around, this is my blind reaction. Look at that face. It is mesmerized. If you turn the corner, if you if you turn the corner, turn around. Look. Look at all those books. This room has literally broken records for for like the amount of bookshelves in a room, I think the record is. Um, but yeah, it's a record breaker, this room. Can you see why I wanted to visit this shop? Wow. Honestly, wow. I mean, most of these books are academic things, so I wasn't really sure where to start with that kind of thing. Also, they would be really expensive. Um, but I just liked having a look around the room, just going around all the different parts. It was so interesting. Just looking at all these different books. Wow. But I believe I'm about to return upstairs for the next part of Blackwell's. They had this little penguin mini classic section and I found this um, short story that I wanted to read. I've wanted to read it for like a couple of years now. Um, so I picked that up. They also have this really good translated fiction section. I always think translated fiction is really great because it's difficult to achieve, um, but also very admirable at the same time. Here's me looking at the new fiction hardback selection. I kept going back here because I wasn't quite sure what to get. They also had a three for two offer, which I thought would clear me out, but they didn't have many books. I appreciated the YA section. Um, I didn't realize Chain of Thorns was there. Otherwise, I would have picked it up. But yeah, here's me going probably back to the fiction section. Yeah, I do go back to the fiction multiple times. Uh, I keep I keep doing this, but it's it should be a different part anyway but there were so many different books that i could have got but i did not i had to, i had to restrain myself they also had a sell section and i did find a book from here that i wanted they also had a blind date with a book and i've always been curious about these here's a book that i thought i would check the reviews of here's me trying to find my parents in the cafe nero this is finally me leaving the store i spent a long time in here just looking at all the books it was an incredible experience. I would really recommend going into this Black Holes. It is my favourite bookshop, I think, that I went to in Oxford. But I liked all of the ones I went to. So if you, if you want to plan a trip to Oxford, I'd certainly recommend it. And go to some bookshops. My final shots of the day involve me walking back down Broad Street and some fruit gums on the train. Here's a quick overview of everything I bought, including Samok Land, which I got in a blind date with a book. I have no idea what to expect with this thing. Anyway, thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.